Hello everyone, I'm Michal Forishek. I will be presenting problem B of these world finals. So, problem B starts as a graph problem. We are given the po a graph that is the position of the headquarters and there are n different vertices which represent some uh, branches of a company. Now we are given a number s, the number of groups, and we have to divide them into groups. So for example, in this picture there is a blue group and a red group. Uh, the group sizes can be arbitrarily, arbitrary, we get to choose them. Uh, the, and what happens after we divide those vertices into groups is that within each group, uh, the, each vertex needs to send a message to each other vertex and those messages have to travel via headquarters. The graph is directed so those two paths can be different. So for instance, for these two vertices that are blue, one of them would be sending the message like this here and there and the other would be sending the message like this first of all it has to reach headquarters so it goes like this and then it has to reach the other vertex so it goes like that all of the edges have different lengths and uh, what we are looking for is such a division of all the vertices into exactly as groups that minimizes the total length of the courier paths so here's what we have to realize when solving this task. First of all, uh, it, uh, it is a bad idea to actually count the distances between each pair of vertices because all of those paths have to go through the headquarters. So what we can do instead is we can realize that for each vertex there will be some messages going from this vertex to the headquarters and there will be some other messages, exactly the same number of messages, leaving headquarters and going to this vertex. So what we can do instead of computing all pair distances is we can just run Dijkstra's algorithm twice, once from the headquarters and twice uh, the second time towards headquarters and uh, this will give us the distance from each vertex to the headquarters and back and some of these distances is like half a cost of a courier. It's not exactly half but conceptually. So when we have these numbers what we can do is we can forget about the entire graph. Now it becomes just a problem about numbers. So we can take all of these n distances or uh, n costs of sending a courier to the headquarters and back and we can sort them. This is because uh, when we are dividing uh, these uh, vertices into groups, the total cost we will pay for a group can be computed like this. This is the blue formula. We can take the group size minus one times the sum of these costs, some of the distances we computed in step one. Why is this the case? Well, because if there are, for instance, three red vertices, each of them has to send a message to three minus one, which is two other vertices. So everybody except for himself. And uh, these costs will then accumulate. So into this vertex, there will be incoming messages. Out of this vertex, there will be outgoing messages. This is their number and we sum this over the entire group. So now, it, uh, what we can see from this formula is that it, is, it never pays uh, to have a more expensive vertex, one that has the distances larger, placed into a larger group. We always want to put the, the largest group will contain the vertices, some vertices with the smallest costs and so on, because otherwise we could switch them around and get a better solution. So now we have sorted distances like this, we have an array of length n and we need to cut it into s pieces in such a way that the sum of the costs of the blocks is minimized. And now we are almost done because this is already a fairly standard problem that can be solved using dynamic programming. So what we will be doing is uh, we will consider all prefixes of this array. So one uh, parameter will be the length x of this prefix and the other parameter will be the number y of pieces we want to produce. So for each x, for each y, we are asking the question, what is the cheapest way to, produce, to divide this segment into exactly y pieces? Now, uh, the, brut like the uh, most straightforward way to approach this would be simply to try all possibilities for the size of the last piece and then always 
This gives us a smaller problem and take the maximum out of those. If we did this, we would get a solution that runs in n cubed time because there are n possibilities for x, at most n possibilities for y, and for each of them we are trying at most n possible ways where to break off the last piece. Now comes the main trick of this problem. This solution can actually be optimized from n cubed to n squared log n. And the trick how to do this is to realize that uh, we have to use another information. The sizes of the groups as we are going from the right to the left, uh, sorry, from the left to the right, the sizes have to be a non-increasing sequence. So if we have a group of size four, we never want to have a group of size more than four farther towards the right. So how can we do this? How can we use it in our solution? The trick is uh, that we will, be try we will be always be starting on this right side of the current segment. And if we are dividing it, for example, into three parts, then we know that we don't have to try possibilities longer than x divided by three. So we will start here. We will try these possibilities. And when we get to x divided by three, we will end. And now if we take a fixed value of x and consider all possible values of y, then what we will be doing is we will be trying at most all possibilities, half of them, a third of them, and so on. So this actually sums up to a harmonic number. So a single x will be processed in x times log x time. And if we sum it over all x, this gives us the promised solution in n squared log n time. And this is fast enough to get accepted. So that's it for problem B. Thanks for your attention.